Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. We are very, very honored and very happy to be joined today uh, by a member of the community I know very well, uh, Mullah, and I'm going to find out all of, I guess, more about him as well. Uh, our dear friend Sayyid Ali Radawi. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidna. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you? Wallah, I shouldn't be shaking your hand while I drive, but there you go. How's it going? Are you well? I'm well. If you're, if you're well, I'm well, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. No complaints so far. No, no, uh, no, no, so no. we'll see how it goes. How have things been? Things, um, you know, I, I can't complain about life. Yes. Alhamdulillah, God's been blessing us and the family and our community with everything that we need. Us and more than we need. Alhamdulillah. 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 Beautiful, beautiful. So, uh, welcome to the show, first yes. of all. Uh, you're one of a select bunch of people that's been chosen to become uh, a behind the wheel. Allahu Akbar. Uh, yeah, it's a, big, it's a big deal, by the way. It's a big deal. So. Okay. Yeah, so, just tell us a bit about your, 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 bit about your childhood growing up. Okay, so... I'm going to try to go back as far as my memory can take me. Okay. Um, I would say possibly four or five years old. Mm. Some say, how can you even remember this? There was, I do have some vivid visions. Nice. Call them that. But Alhamdulillah, you know, growing up from a very, very young age, I still remember, you know, being the youngest, mm. the youngest in the family. So I always had to look up to, well, the, of course, the parents, my mom, my dad, my oldest brother, my sisters. But how I was the how many do you have siblings? Alhamdulillah, I've got we're six siblings all together. Yeah. And you're the youngest of six? No, I have a younger sister. Okay. Yeah, but so at that time, I was the youngest. At that time, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for, uh, you know, I used to see, like, I was insignificant when it comes to anything. Uh, Decision making, or, you know, what, what am I going to have all, for lunch all, today? All the brothers and sisters will make you feel like yeah, that. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And then I would say only when I, like, got to, like, year, year four, year five, year six, that I sort of understand life and its surroundings. Mm. So I, was, I had like a proper childhood. Alhamdulillah, I think my family allowed me to roam free growing up without any like, you know, telling me off too much and stuff. Alhamdulillah. But so I think I got to a stage where, you know, Ali, you live in reality. There's good, there's bad, there's right, right. there's wrong, there's right. halal and haram from right. a very, very young age. Right. I don't know how old I am in year three, year four. How old do I be? Year three is about... I think I'll be about seven or eight. I'm yeah, not well, my daughter's in year three, so I should know. It's seven, eight, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So around that age, I think I sort of had like proper Islamic nourishment. Wow, from yeah, that young. I think from that young, and mm -hmm. I, and I think why I say that, my father Allah rahmah, Allah rahmah. Um, he 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 was a scholar and a lecturer in his own right. So I had, I was lucky. He was a ma'am, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had the blessing of having that figure in my family. So. Everything was like a story about the Ahlul Bayt. Everything was a wow. story about, you know, a Quran story. Everything was like, you what, know. What was that like at that age growing up with a Sheikh as the head of the household? Because I, 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 you know, we had this, we had uh, had the conversation of Mullah Ali the other day as well, and mm. we were talking about that. Sorry, there's people that are beeping at me because. You're too I special. Got, well, no, I got caught in the conversation, <laughs> so I was supposed to leave that a long time, the light a long time ago, but oh. I didn't. I apologize. Yeah, so what was it like growing up, growing up with a Sheikh as the head of the household? And to have someone who, you know, wears the imama, if we can say so, mm. I think it was special mm. because it, it, it gave me a glimpse of faith. Nice. Um, it, it, from, because you would live it, breathe it, see it, hear it, yeah. like all the senses you can imagine growing up was there. Mm. Yani, uh, and the beautiful thing about it is my father used to deliver lectures and stuff. Mm. So I used to always see him prepare for the lecture, uh, you know, sit down and uh, you know, go through the books and go through the conversations, and he'll write, and then he'll have other lecturers and scholars over in the house. Yeah, and they'll have the is conversation. It, it, and I was involved in all of them, like, sitting down, listening. Eight years old. Uh, it was very interesting. Yeah. In, in in hindsight, as an adult now with children, do you look back thinking it, it, like that? But at the time, when you're seven or eight. Having a sheikh as a dad, did, did you also feel that? I mean, I, I don't think you could feel the same way at seven or eight as you can now, obviously. Mm. But were there any moments where you just thought, like, you know, like there's a lot of like you know, pressure or a lot of like no, to be a no. certain way? I, I don't think I had external pressure mm. where you know I'd be like, oh, why is why do I have a religious figure in the house, right. for example? Right. I think it's I what, loved it's it. what you knew. I was basically. used to it, yeah, yeah and yeah. I didn't know anything else. Yeah, I'll yeah, be honest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in that Alhamdulillah, which is also a big blessing. Alhamdulillah, shukur. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, I guess a little bit later we'll talk about the influence of your father and others that they had on your Allah. Um, 
but before before we get to kind of that, that stage, I think growing up, I have heard from others, and, and I think you've mentioned to me once as well that growing up, you weren't in like the the best part of town. It was a bit of a uh, interesting area that you were in. I wouldn't call it like a rough area. Okay. Would you? I don't know. You don't. Seem... I think I would. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tell us about it. What was that like? Okay. So for those who let's say know London well, okay. I used to be very in the vicinity of an area called Mozart. Okay, I know. Yeah, okay. okay, so, so now I'm, that you know, <laughs> so so saying Ali was raised in a very rough area, just saying, so you know. not from the fuck life. But yeah, yeah, no, alhamdulillah. <laughs> nah, no. I mean that's a that's a blessing that you're not, to be honest, because Mozart normally that's what it creates. But they, I guess you're gonna tell us, yeah, tell so, us about it. So we we moved houses quite a few times, but right. it was always within that area. Okay. So whether it was down the road, a few doors down, literally, we'll move right. a few doors down, right. or two, three streets down. Right. But we were always surrounded within that. W10, W9, Postcode mm -hmm, area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those are areas at the time, I think they're improved now, but at the time, they were very known and notorious, known for drugs, gangs, yep, yep, stabbings, yep, killings, and yep. all the crime you can imagine, the theft, the burglary, uh, random attacks on the streets. But one thing that stood out for me is that if you sort of try to be like them or fit in and be cool with them, life is fine. Okay. Life is fine. You pick that up very young, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They smell the fear, basically. So if basically. they want a spud, you spud them. That's it. You know, they want to say something. For the brothers and sisters that don't know, this is a spud. Yeah. There you go. Just just in case, yeah. Because there's maybe someone from Tanzania that doesn't know what a spud is. Exactly. Just in case. Or for example, you know, if you're walking past down the street with them and they give you that, that look. The you, nod. You don't say you're right, you say wagwan. Okay. Things like that. Hello, hello. So that was there. I'm not saying it wasn't there. <laughs> but um, let me see how old I was. Because I, I left that area a long time ago as well. Um, so maybe 11, 12, 13, early right. teenage, right. I was there. Right. And my school, mm. my secondary school, my high school, wasn't too far from there as well. So a lot of my classmates and a lot of the pupils at school and the friends that I had from school were from Mozart's heart. Okay. The actual right. veins of Mozart. Right. For whatever trouble was in school, came to Mozart. If there was trouble in Mozart, came back to school. Right. So life was trouble, troublesome. Yeah. But Did I wasn't get... involved in it. Okay. So my, my involvement with them was on the Salaamu Alaikum basis. Yeah. How are you doing? You alright? How did you stay clear of it? I Because I, I Okay. I, I presume that being school yeah. and you the area that you live in and knowing them, you would have had a lot of interaction with, with people that would have went down a path that mm. is, you know, astray basically. How did you stay clear of that? Yeah, yeah I've, I've got friends from school who, who are now behind bars. I do. I, I know two friends who you know, they put a knife into each other. So that's how rough it was. Wow. Um, but in terms of me, I sort of knew mentally, and I think this is all thanks to the way I was raised and I grew up, mm. that yes, this exists, mm. but it's not the right path to take. Mm. That, you know, yes, you might you might find, I don't know, happiness or contentment and a few seconds of pleasure, whatever yes. it is. Yes, But believe me, it's not worth the akhirah. Mm. So I had that mentality at the same time. Mm. And it was always like, you know, trying to, you know, take away the whispers of shaitan and inshallah staying on the path of iman. So that, that, that was like what kept me in check. Right. Knowing, you know, mama's gonna be upset. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knowing mama's upset gonna... Is a, yeah, yeah, upset yeah. is, a, is a, a political way of saying it. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was always reminded by my mom, you can never disrespect your mom. Mm. You can never disrespect your mom. You know, I think every guest we've spoken to, mm. and I know that you, you obviously have a podcast, which maybe we'll, we'll mention okay. later as well, but mm. I think, I'm sure you've, you've seen the same. A lot of guests talk about from their childhood like and, and give so much thanks to the way that their parents raised yes, them and yes, having, yes. They're having in those formative years such an influence on, on the characters they are today. So is there anything that your mom and dad used to do at that age? Maybe there's parents listening, maybe there's someone who's 11 or 12 or 13 now that knows or has friends that are in a gang. Is there anything that really stuck with you? I don't know if there's one thing, mm. but on a generic level, yeah. if I can be honest, if my memory serves me well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Go is, for it. is that I would have a constant reminder, not a constant telling off. Okay, interesting. So, um, what I mean by that, for example, if something was bad or wrong, mm. I was told why it was wrong and the consequences of it without saying you're going to burn in hell. Mm. Without, for example, you know, if you do this, you're going to be grounded. You're mm. going to do this, you know, you're not going to have your 
what was it? My Nintendo, I can't remember now. I had, I had something. Yeah. PSP, it was a PSP. P P yeah, For PSP. those who don't know, it was like a little portable PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that I didn't have fears of, you know, this is going to be taken away or I'm not going to see my friends or I'm not going to end up going to Hussein uh, Rasul Adam with Baba and stuff like that. No, yeah. I was like told this is wrong and I was given the, you know, the, the consequences of the good and the consequences right. of the bad and right. the reward. Very nice. Seeking that reward, that pleasure of you know pleasing Allah, pleasing the Ahlul Bayt, yep. and pleasing your parents. Um, I know you mentioned a few times now, Sayyid Allah Rahma, your father, passed. How old were you? I was fifteen. Okay, fifteen, fifteen. That must have been at that age. Like we talk about trauma, and I think in our community as well, we have a bit of an issue where we don't really address or talk about these things openly, mm. but. At 15, losing the person who, you know, as you mentioned earlier, was probably the biggest influence in your life. Till today, I think. I'd say. Wow. Yeah. What was that like? That must have been tough. It was just a moment, sorry. Okay, so I was 15 years old mm. and I was in Hussein Tarasul Adam and um, just trying to remember the moments of when I found out yeah. that he passed away. I had a few people come up to me and saying, is your dad alright? And um, I'm like, yeah. You know, I spoke to him in the morning. This was Ashura day. Wow. This was the 10th of Muharram, 2008. So on the 10th of Muharram, he called me just after uh, there was Azar going on in the morning, Rasul Adam, and yeah. he was in Kuwait. So he okay. wasn't in, he wasn't he was in, reciting the, in Kuwait. He was giving lectures in Kuwait and Rasul Adam there. Mm. And he called, he was like, Ah, Baba, Khalasul Aza, you know, Ma'jurin, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. the usual things you, you and Catch you, up. Yeah, yeah, just catching up on the day. Mm. And he was like, We're gonna go to Karbala. Mm. And like, he, he, he had that sort of vibe in the conversation that, you know, I've, Khalas, we're going to Iraq. You have to imagine, Karbala was a dream to us. Yeah. At that time, 2008, it was difficult. Like, I, no one, it wasn't easy. It's not yeah. like today. No. So I was like, in my head, what are you talking about? La agency, yeah, la. We don't have the how we are. We don't have still there. Saddam. You know, there's civil war, chaos. Yeah. yeah. For, we're like okay, and then so that was the conversation I had with him. Fast forward a few hours, Shami Kharibana at night. I had a few people come up to me, and they were like, you know, is your dad alright? And I was like, um, I think so. Like we we spoke in the morning, everything's fine. Because he's abroad, we'd probably speak. Once or twice every two three days. Right. Does it make sense? So it wasn't like a con. It wasn't there every of day. Of course. Of course. For for me, everything is fine because that was the usual. You know that gap of a few hours. Yeah. Doesn't mean nothing. Yeah. For, um, and then I can see like a lot of men coming to me. Do you want my? Do you want chai? Do you want? I don't think they've understood that I don't know what's going on. Oh my god. Yeah. And then, but then I sort of got a glimpse because I used to see a few people cry as they chat to me, and. I sort of understood something's not well with Baba. Mm. So I remember going to the lady's side, mm. um, asking for, I think it was my mum, so I can chat to my mum. At that time, no one had the phone yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you didn't I think know, I had yeah. the phone, but I didn't have credit. I, don't, right. I can't remember how it yeah. works, yeah? yeah. Um, for, I got my mum, I was like, what's going on? Everyone's asking about Baba. She goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. For, oh, and then we had uh, my elder sister's husband, Sayyid Hashim, Al Hashim, Allah Hafla. He was, he called us one by one from the Husseini. He's like, let's go home. We need to speak about something. Your father's not well. So they didn't tell us, Allah Rahman Baba has passed away. They said, you know, dad's not well. And at yeah. that time, it wasn't abnormal for us because he had heavy asthma. Yeah. Uh, he also had a heart issue. Mm. So just like, I think a year before that, he had like an open heart surgery and mm. things like that. Mm. But that we knew, okay, this is something else to do. Maybe he had like an asthma attack. So this was what's in our yeah. minds. Yeah. But when we got home, the news was broken to us. That Allah Rahman the Sayyid's passed away. Mm. I was normal. No way. I was absolutely normal. My mom, uh, I can still remember, for example, you know, Sabah. For, for whoever has parents, inshallah, you never heard these, but there's certain like screams and sounds or um, ways of mourning that you never want to hear. Mm. Um, but for me personally, I was fine. I remember I left the main place and I went to the kitchen in the house. Right. And then one of the elders that was there said Hashim at the time, he came to me, he was like, you know, 
have you understood? Have you grasped the situation? This is what's happening. Yeah. I'm like, no. I am absolutely fine. Fast forward, we get to Kuwait. Right. We get to Kuwait and I'm still fine. Like everyone's in Azar mode. May, maybe at that, at that, that like that age, that was your like coping mechanism when you look back. I, I'm not sure, but mm. but I would say. I'll tell you the moment where I understood he passed yeah. away. Yeah. It was, it, was, it, was when, it was when we got out of uh, the airport in Kuwait and we got to the Maghassan, Maghassan, whatever that place is called, yeah. where, where they wash the dead the bodies Maghassan, and stuff. Yeah. And that's when I saw mm. my dad. Mm. And it was then I understood, he, you know, he's gone from this world. And that was your, your release then when you started? And that's what I understood. Well? Well, Allah, that's what I felt. That void. Mm. It was scared because I was like, my boy, like I can touch him, I can speak with him, but when there's no response from your dad or when like there's no response from someone who you look up yeah look up to and you know you spent yeah, your entire sadik. life with Allah Sadiq. It be, you, you sort of understand, well oh, that's it. Mm. Death is real, you know, death is reality, it exists. And it was like, okay, he's gone, he's gone. That's uh, um so that was when I first felt that yeah. Khalas, he's left this world. Yeah. It was that moment. Um, I don't know how much I want to speak about the subject, but you mentioned coping and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Let me go to that. Yeah, because I'm sure there are brothers and sisters listening to this who have lost yeah. a loved one recently, right? Mm. So, mashallah, you know, you've, you've, you and your family, and especially your mom, God bless her, you, you know, you've done an amazing job to continue to raise she has anyway to continue to raise great great children mashallah and you know you now are, you you now are you know a respected member of the community you're a khadim of Imam Hussein salam you're looking after a family yourself which is all credit really to the you know credit to your parents right alhamdulillah so i'm sure there's someone out there that might want to hear like what 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 your advice would be on how to cope I, I think for me, I think like the days and the weeks and the months after that, I, I, I never came out the state of grief. Mm. I was in constant grief, mm. alone. I was never shown. Um, for, you know, if I, ever, if I ever was to interact with anyone, I was absolutely fine. Mm. But I would hold, hold that all inside me. I remember I'd go home and sleep, and I'd start crying. And I, well, I would cry to sleep every night. Oh, yeah. I was like 15, yeah, very oh, young, but yeah, I, not easy. you know, then then it started to affect my school, and I, and I realized I think you cannot boil it up. You have to have these conversations, and you have to understand. I couldn't speak with my family about it as well because no, they're going for the same thing. And... At that time, I think no one wants to see a guy cry. Mm. Like no one really understood that a man can cry for yeah, example. So I was in school, and خلاص I اشتقت بابا. I had that feeling. I remember I went to, I think I was in year, year nine. I remember I went to uh, the, the head of that subject I was in. I don't remember what position they had at that time. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look, I can't be in school and go home. She was like, what's wrong? And I explained. And then she was like, why have you never told us? Right. We, so you didn't even know what at school knew either? No, they knew he passed away, but they never knew yeah, I was yourself. suffering yeah, inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, I, and, and I was like, I just don't want to speak and she was like let's arrange counseling for you mm. in the school mm. so you don't need to leave school your parents don't need to know your friends don't need to know it can happen at school yeah and twice a week for many weeks there was a counselor that used to come and speak with me mm. had that not happened i think i would have um exploded from emotion and i remember the counselor would just think what are you talking about i'll talk to her about imam hussein <laughs> i'll talk to her for example his his you know, when I go home, I look at his imam, I look at all of yeah, these yeah, things. Yeah. She's like, what are you talking about? But for me, someone hearing me having this convo, yeah, absolutely. Allah was like a relief yeah, from yeah. the chest. But what really helped me with the grief is knowing that I know 100% Baba is with the Ahlul Bayt. Yeah. I know 100% that Imam Hussein, his nur, his light from his face is shining on him. And I had that within me. Had I not had that, um, yaqeen and belief yeah, yeah. that he's not he's with them I don't think I would have been okay yeah the fact he died on the 10th of Muharram yes and I was, I was able say. to grieve Imam al-Hussein at the same time I saw yeah. like 
and, and then year after year, I was like, do I remember Baba or do I remember Mom Hussein? But you alhamdulillah, we both. remember both. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If, um, if it wasn't for the Ahlul Bayt here, I think I would have struggled a lot. But yeah. I would say one thing, one advice is speak. Yeah. And if you know someone that has lost a loved one, especially like a parent or a sibling or someone who means a lot to them, don't tell them how you're feeling you're okay. Tell them, let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk. Yeah. Is there something you want to say? Take them out. Yeah, you take them away from the environment of having thoughts, continuous thoughts of, you know. I mean, I think even you know, now, let's say it's slightly better, but back then, it, you know, it is, it is difficult because, as you said as well, like, you know, there is a taboo that men shouldn't be. In fact, subhanAllah, I do think that part of the the benefits of the, 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 the holy month of Muharram no. is that literally it is like a big therapy session. It is. Because you, 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 you all congregate together, you're crying, you're letting out your emotion as well, and you do need to do that also. But you're letting out your emotion um, in, 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 in quite, a, in essence, in a structured way. The, uh, that is true, because when, when Baba passed away, and I told you just a few days later, and then, you know, yeah. um, only when I got back a few weeks later did I understand I'm full of grief. Because yeah. I was able to cry yeah. about Karbala and Imam yeah. Hussein, yeah. and you know, what happened through that. So yeah. that sort of helped, you know, releasing those tears, letting yeah, out the emotion seriously helps. But the, the big the big point as well is that you had, you know, alhamdulillah you had and God bless that teacher by the way, because that is yeah that's a lovely thing to do yeah, for, yeah, for, yeah. for someone at that age. Because I think at that age as well it's such an impressionable age that if you if it goes wrong at fifteen and you go down the wrong route that's and sense. you don't it's a dangerous age. Yeah, because yeah. because sometimes a lot of people let's say they lose a loved one. And yeah. you see it, it happens even within our communities. They leave religion. They go off the rails a bit, yeah. Or they they, they they go into a world that you would never expect them to enter. Yeah. Because they have these things, why did God take him away? Or why me? Like, yeah. And if no one is there to answer those questions, that's the trouble. They're not going to get the right yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah, they're going to start denying denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, denying mm. His rahmah, His mercy. Mm. And why did God take his soul, for example? Mm. And just letting them know that, inshallah, you know, they're all right. You know, يعني, God is Arham Ar yeah, Absolutely. There is another world out there. Yeah. And, and, exactly. and the laqa is going to be in Jannah, inshallah. Yeah, yeah. If Allah you know Allah that well. and you have that and you instill it inside them, I think it can help them cope. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I know it's not an easy thing to to talk about, to be honest. So I, I do appreciate you your opening up, Sayyid. Um, and credit credit to your father. You know, there's a. Uh, there's, uh, uh, Rasalat al haquq from mm. Imam al Sajjad alayhi salam. And he does say that anything good in yourself that you see comes from is from your father because your father is your root. So God bless him. Inshallah, we'll recite him Surah al Fatiha. Inshallah. Yeah, I would say my mom took over the responsibility of a father yeah. from 15 till, till, you know, till I got married. For it's it. crazy. But I never felt the void of parenthood. Dear Allah. I felt the void of his absence 100%. Of course, you can't but, not. But but how mums do that? She kept him alive. Man. I would say mama kept Baba alive. That's amazing. Man. That's amazing. So, with growing up, when is it that you actually got into? Because for the brothers and sisters that don't, that don't know, and I'm sure you do anyway, but obviously you are a reciter of of Latmiyat, of Mualid, Nohaz, etc. So how did you how did you get into that? Okay, so. Uh, no one's asked me ever that question by the way. Really? How did you get into that? Just no one's like, when did you start and stuff, right? No, no, what, what was but, the cause? But I, I think the cause was, um, realistically, mm. honestly speaking here, I think I was about 13 or 14 years old. Yes. I never wanted to become a reciter. Okay. I always thought about delivering lectures on the pulpit. Really? Because why we used to recite okay, lectures. Okay, as the Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fa Makes I, sense. I, I never saw it as a reciter of Latmiya and stuff. Um, for I had sometimes I used to like pretend I'm reciting, even like between friends. Yeah, everyone does. Yeah, even like between friends, we used to go at the back of the Husseiniya. Yeah. We'll, we'll create like a makeshift number of chairs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My, my friend would do Latmiya, well, so I'll give the Na'i, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was my childhood at, at mosque, yeah. For I had that sort of thinking of path that I, I want to take, mm. should I decide one day. Uh, and then I realized, I think when Baba passed away, mm. 
I don't think that's a path I want to take. Mm -hmm. Not because I don't want it, because I wasn't ready right. to enter a world of Hawza. Yeah. I wasn't ready to, you know, enter a world of being away from family now for yeah. so much. Like, yeah. Yeah. I Things wanted to be bit. here. I wanted to be in where my family is. Like, I, I, like his death, I think, played a very critical role in the path yeah. I took. Of course. Now, there was a lot of encouragement from my community um, saying, look, ultimately you said Ali you were gonna go on the path of service like we know it we felt it like this is this is where it was going and now it is important that you do for the sake of your father for example mm. um, so the community also played uh, a huge role yeah yes yeah interesting because we always talk about it takes a community to raise a kid but in this circumstance with the death of your father Allah, that was a big thing because Rasul Adam which is the the Karbalai mosque yes. in, in London yeah at that time and I still think now but more so at that time there were so many boys your age mm -hmm. who were there weekly. Yes, yes. And yes, it was yes. like the place to go. It was, it was indeed. And being the place to go at 15 years old, bro, I had no voice. Yeah. I think my voice was like so deep. Like, yeah. who on earth is another way speaking or talking or reciting? But yeah. they would encourage me wow. to go. Yeah, and you know, take that mic for five minutes, or if you're in the house, majlis, you know, let rather we recite a few lines. Yeah. Or yeah, the encouragement was there, and Subhanallah, I think within a few months or a year, I think by the time I became like 16 or 17, did I ever hear someone call me Mullah Ali? I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not Mullah. For me, I'm just Islamic. <laughs> I'm just like reciting here and there. But that was like the first time I heard Mullah Ali, right? Ali. And um, I, 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 I remember I, I saw, I went to my mom, and I was like, someone called me Mullah. And then she was like, hmm, do you want to be a reciter? Like, do you want to start reading? If so, I can help you. Okay, well. Uh, my mom, although she doesn't recite, but she'd always go to like uh, reciting lessons. Or she'd oh, interesting. Go, yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, long time ago. Uh, so I remember she, like, she, 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 but she would know only like the female style. Of, right. Of, for example, um, Recitation. love poem, yeah, recitations, yeah, yeah. or even their poetry is different. Of course. Even like the rhythm of the lap, the lap, yep, me when the it lap, comes is yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there wasn't much she can do, but the best thing I sort of did was listen to as much lap miyat as I can in terms of trying to replicate emulate, or yeah. emulate or try to see like when does the lap miyat exactly? Where do you pause? Like yes, all of these things. Yes, yes. I mean, also you you know you're but until raised, now, raised in RA. Until now, I'm yeah. in that same process. Yeah. I still do the same thing, and I have never called myself mullah. Really? I'll be very honest. Aslan, I don't even call myself say it. I just say call me. I just say call me Ali Radhawi because I don't say I chose to recite. I think Allah bless me with the khidmah. So I, I don't know when I'll be ready to say, yeah, maybe I am a radud. I'm not sure. But I will go wherever the service takes me. If it's on the pulpit, it's a lovely outlook, if it's a workshop. I think, I think, you know, the, the, the best title we can attain for, whether it is. Uh, there, you go. there you go. The servants of those who serve Imam Al Hussein. Like this, yeah. this is something we earn for, and inshallah, we are all blessed with. Inshallah. I never, like you, I've never seen it as like a career path. Yeah. I've never seen it as something I'm going to be doing full time. This has till now is not is not something that I've said. I have to go chase this. I have to go do yeah. this. Yeah. I have to go arrange. But when this. the opportunity arises, when the opportunity is there, I take it. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. 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 You've also, you know, you've. you've Mashallah, I mean, it's difficult not to call you a mullah because we have a few, a few tracks of yours as well. But I mean, um, I'd, I'd like to play this one as well, and then feel free to sing along as well. I might, I might do a bit of clapping with you, and um, we'll put the volume up so the brothers and sisters can hear at home. Okay. It's Arabic or English? It's Arabic at the end. In the end, in English in the beginning. You want me to recite at the same time? Yeah, yeah, why not? Haydar Ali, born in the Kaaba, a miracle till today. His mother named him Haydar, Haydar Ali Al Karrar. His legacy still lives on from Fatihah day far. Muhammad raised his arm, walking Quran, no one can come closer. Zawj al Batul, Akhar Rasul, Haydar Ali, Mawla. حامل حماية المصطفى حيدر علي مولاه على حبك 
ترب وينا واجب حبك علينا على حبك ترب وينا واجب حبك علينا أشهد أن عليا ولي الله ما شاء الله نايس إز إز ذا إنجلش ليركس يو رود ذيم؟ أي ديد يو نو أتل يو فاني ستوري يا Because I like how the English becomes the Arabic, and it's a it's a, it's a nice tune. That tune you created as well, I think. I yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what happened. Yeah. This, the story behind this Mola Ali thing. Yeah. I wanted to recite Ali Ali Mola. Okay. Zian, and I was like, you know what? How much time is someone gonna read Nuri's Ali Ali Mola? Yeah. yeah. Like I, it's been rinsed. Allah have that. I love him. Yeah. Nuri's but it's been rinsed. The, yeah. You know, in the in, in the Arabic world, things don't get rinsed. Because they're written every because time. Because they're classic. Yeah. And colors they but stay even, forever. But even even so, I think even if you're, you know, as an example, Ali Ali Mola, yeah, right, it's a classic and it stays forever. And I think. No, I've, it can be maybe in 50 years, or in 30 years, 40 years. Yeah, but also a lot of Arabic did when they read something in a Mola, they get something new. Yes. Yeah, and maybe they add Ali Ali Mola right in the end, but they read something yeah, new. Yeah. yeah. As in, Ali Ali Mola is always there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's never gonna go. Yeah. But when you only have like, for example, 20 English recitals. Yeah. And you only have, for example, five, six. Uh, poets out there yeah. that you can write yeah. English. Yeah, you can hear the same thing in every center, every community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you yeah. try to stay yeah. a bit far away. That's what I mean. I don't mean like. No, no. Of course, <laughs> of course, of course. For, and then I was like, I'm gonna write this myself. Nice. Because I used this, to always have like uh, things. Was this the first time you wrote? No, no, no. no. Okay. No, no. For, yeah, I do some poetry as well. Yeah. <laughs> not just you. <laughs> like, no, no. Okay. I know. I know. I mean, I, mean, I know. I know that you 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 write nearly all your stuff. I think. I think. Recently. Okay. Recently. Yeah. 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 Um, I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do Ali Ali Mola, but with my words this time. Nice. So, I remember, I wrote the words, and it was the same chorus, Ali Ali Mola, the usual. And then I remember I was speaking to the studio Sharif guy, Ahmed Sharif. Yep. Pure vocal Pure studios. Vocal. Shout out. And I was like, look, I know I told you I want to record something for the for Mawlud Imam Ali, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this tune. He was like, say, I'm going to be very honest with you. There's someone else recording and it's in the same tune. Oh, wow. And in English, of course, different words. Yeah. But I was like, hmm, that just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And ultimately, those who are going to listen is like the same target audience. Yeah, I think, I think you're right in doing that. So you, want, you want to provide a khidmah that is useful yes. for the audience. But I was like, you know what, let, 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 let me make it some, something different. Thinking like it's impossible. How how can I now take Ali Ali Mola on my head and change it to something else? I I just I just didn't swap know. the words around. It didn't work. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. And then I was like, you know, what, let me go hear a few uh, anashid that are about Imam Ali that has nothing to do with Ali Ali Mola. Right. But so I think I came across an Ahwazi sort of style of recitation. I was it was my first time here, like instruments in the Maulud. Mm. I was like, with Imam Ali, I was like, what is going on? But uh, that sort of like took me out of the Ali Ali Mawla mode. Yeah. And it sort of now became Mawla Ali, Mawla Ali. For, it sort of helped me change everything. The words changed, the melody changed, yeah, everything yeah, changed. Yeah, and I was like, you know what? I've never done anything in Arabic. Yeah. I've never like studio version. I've never done anything in Arabic. And I was like, you know what? Let me put Arabic into this as well. Nice. That was the most difficult thing yeah. I did in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, tell me English. Inshallah, it will take a day or half a day yeah. to come yeah, up with Arabic a verse or two. Tough. Arabic, I was like, how on earth? Did you write the Arabic as well? I did. Oh, wow. And I didn't know it came out well, alhamdulillah, yeah, until after it got released. With recitation, mashallah, you've had the opportunity to travel the world as well um, and recite in various mosques. Yeah. I know you've obviously done the studio tracks as well, mm. done the, 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 the live recitation as well. You mentioned something earlier where you said, if the opportunity comes to you, you take it, but you don't see yourself as a mullah. I want to just talk briefly about that. Why, why do you not see yourself as a mullah? It's not that I don't see myself as a mullah, it's that I don't see myself making it a career. Okay. Um, why I say that, if you want me to be very honest. Please. Um, I That's the go, point of the I show. I won't go into too much detail, but I've seen like the politics, the division, right. the issues that stem from such services, if I can right. call them like right. that. At the right. moment, sadly, sometimes they're treated as like you're providing a service. Right. So it's, it's more like a career sort of thing. It's more like a professional sort of thing rather than a khidma sort of thing. Right. For I told myself, 
if I make it a full time thing, would I lose? I had this convo myself, genuinely. Would yeah. I lose the aspect of am I doing khidma or is it now am I doing a performance? Interesting. Because for me, it's two different things. People can say, yeah, you, you're performing, you're reciting, you're a mullah, you're a dude, but ultimately. So you think they, that they're mutually, you don't think they can be put together? You think they're mutually exclusive? Personally, yes, I think they're okay. exclusive. I, I think they're two separate things. Okay. There's khidma and there's career. Yep. Not that whoever makes it a career. No, no, that's your, that's your view. Khidmet. That's your view. That's, that, that's my, Fine, that's, that's, my take that's what we're here for. Yeah, for, that's what I mean. I'm when sure, I say, listen, I'm sure a lot of the brothers and sisters may agree with you as well, anyway. So. And believe me, there's a lot of people who it is a career to them. Yeah. And they're the best of servants in this world. Yeah. But if they've managed to keep it that way. Okay. Fair enough. Would it take me away from Khidmet? Maybe. Okay. It could, it could. You're, you're, change not, you're me. not willing to run that risk? Never. No. Okay. Because it, 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 it's a blessing and I'm happy. To feel this way, yeah. I I feel the khidmah. Yeah. The moment I don't feel khidmah and reciting is, I think, is a dangerous world. Yeah. For, that's what I mean when I say I don't want to be called mullah. You've got three full-time roles. Well, not full-time, but you got three roles. One's a mullah, maybe even four, because one is the own business, but also you are a husband and also a father. Mm. So you have two children, I think. Two girls. Two girls, mashallah. Yeah. How old are they? The eldest uh, is six, and the youngest is four, turning five. At the end of mashallah, yeah, mashallah. So that that also, you know, I have kids as well. That is a full time, a full time role. It is. It's a full time role in terms of like responsibility. Yes. Full time role in terms of being there, like being visible, being available. Like, yeah. Like, I think there's so a, there's a term that people coin, which is like anyone can be a father, but being a present father is, is slightly, so slightly huge different. different. Now, so what do you think, as a father, your kind of top duties have to be in particular you know you've got two daughters so you can give us some advice <laughs> when you have daughters what do you, what do you think that the, the key responsibilities are for a present father who doesn't babysit <laughs> that's a babysit I, I think the key responsibilities as a father mm. is firstly have an answer the correct answer to every question they ask right that that's one and if you don't know the answer you don't make it up interesting yeah so you try to get the answer for them. Like if 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 they, if they ask you where is God? Yes. Like I have Hanina asking me where is God? Yes. I tell her he's up, he's up there like in the heavens. He's, but it's not a hundred percent because she's not content with the answer. Yeah. Like where is he? Yeah. Is he a he? Yeah. How is he not a he and a she? Like these are sort of things you have to try and give them yeah. the correct answer to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't just say he's God, khalas. You respect him, you listen to him. No. Like, yeah. That, that is one thing. Like when it comes to like Islam and faith. There's a huge responsibility. You, you also mentioned something earlier, and I had, I forgot who it was, but someone on Instagram was saying this, where, where for example, 10, 20 years ago, mm. you'd go every Thursday and read Da'a Kumail. Whereas now, the children and the teenagers that are reading Da'a Kumail are going to be like, why should I read it every... Whereas the, the generation shifted a little bit, right? Yep. People, like the ch Childhood is slightly different now mm. as, as in comparison to what it was. Yeah. So now, now you have to make it fun for them to come down, come in, right? Not that it's a bad thing. I mean, I mean, partly, it's making them come. <laughs> part, yeah, partly, but also, you know, I think, I think, as you said, you need to have more answers. Yeah. Uh, children are, are much. I mean, I remember when my my son was four years old. He was about to go to sleep, and he said to me, "Baba, did Allah create everything?" I said yes. He goes, "Did He create me?" I said yes. Was, you're very tall, did he create you? He, said, yes. he lost it, he was sleeping. I was very tall. He said to me, yeah, yeah, I am very tall. You, you can't see it. So small. You can't see it in the car, I am very tall. And then he said, Bismillah, mashallah, Allah, 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 Then he said to me, then he literally, I remember, he walked to the window, he was in his bed, and he said to me, did Allah create the moon? Mm. And I said, yeah. And then his face changed. He said to me, did Allah create shaitan? Oh, that's a difficult one. And I was like, yeah. He said, to me, why? He oh, was really angry about it. And obviously, I explained that shaitan wasn't always bad and you have an yeah, option yeah. to begin. It. So you're right. I think kids are becoming, you know, they, they need to find out more and you need to give them better they answers. Do, because well. if you don't give them the right answer, they're going to go ask their teacher, they're going to go ask their yeah, friend, they're going to yeah. ask someone who has no Islamic upbringing value. Well, the thing is, well, I mean, being in the UK and other, well, our brothers and sisters who are like in North America, you've probably felt this. Maybe in Tanzania, less so, although there are some issues in, in every country. Mm. But also, morality is that question now isn't it when you when you when you talk about teachers and schools the curriculum they're teaching our children oh, it's, it's becoming a very dangerous era yeah. for our children yeah and when I say it's dangerous it's because everything that we know is immoral is becoming moral mm. 
Mm. Everything that we know is right is becoming wrong. And mm. everything we know that's scientific and fact is becoming fiction. Yeah, I mean, even to the extent where you're talking about genders and male and female. And, that, and that's the most dangerous one. Yeah. That is the most dangerous one because it's something like I feel like it's trying to be drilled down into our children. Yep. Because who are they discussing it with? Are they discussing it with you as a parent? No. Are the schools, the universities, the government, whoever they are, are they coming to talk to parents? No. They're telling it to the children. That means we have an extra added responsibility. What do you do as a father? What's your view on that? You know, I was discussing this with my missus the other day. Yeah. When I said the other day, probably a few months back. Yeah. And I was like, I think we're, we're probably going to reach a stage, if this continues or worsens, where we have to say goodbye to the UK. Really? I had We had this convo. And... If it does get bad, then I think that is the best way forward because you can't control what happens outside your home. Mm. You can't control the information that's coming to your children when they're not at home. If mm. they're at school, let's say they're in an after school club or let's say you know they're mixing with society. Eventually you live in the UK, you have to mix with the Western world. Yep. They are. I know, mean, the, the fear is not mixing at, at, at an adult no. age, is it? It's the fear is mixing at as when age. you're so impressionable and you know, children look at teachers as role models. Accent. Yeah. Accent, accent. So when they know, for example, you know, a male and a female, and now you come and telling them, you know, stuff. You know, the other day I saw there was like a whole protest in Berlin where everyone was identifying as a dog and barking and, you know, making dog no, sounds. No, 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 no. Like, <laughs> no, if we've reached this stage in the Western crazy. world, what, we laugh, but. I, 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 I just imagine the whole group I'm of people joking, making like, barking sounds. You can go watch this somewhere, yeah? That is crazy. And I said to myself, and I remember I was having this convo with my missus, I was like, imagine, God forbid, I mean, may Allah keep this far away from every every household and shell. Imagine one day your daughter grows up and it comes to you, know what? I'm a man. Mm. Is it our fault? We tried our best, but is it our fault because we stayed in the society? Yeah. We stayed in a society that's immoral. So who's to blame? We can't just blame the schools and the government. We're choosing to stay here. Yeah. Like we're, we're choosing, for example, you know, you know, we want the best of both worlds. For honest, the Western world gives you a comfortable life. It gives you, you know, opportunities. It gives yeah. you, you know, so, yeah. so much things that you can you can be happy with and content. I raise your family in Charlotte in the right way. But going back home, it's a huge change. I'm not ready for it as well. No. No. Like if you tell I mean, me, I mean, there are there are things you can do, say that doesn't mean that you have to necessarily leave the place so for example I know that there are multiple schools that you could take your children to that you know this curriculum maybe isn't as yes as open as others so there are there are options well, at obviously. the moment the primary school my children are in like I've seen the curriculum I've seen what they teach them and stuff yeah like as a parent I think you should know this yeah yeah I agree whether it's speaking to I mean them. I've got two girls as well yeah. by the way and so, I, I, fully, I fully agree whether it's going on the school website where you can you should be able to find what they're teaching I mean, your if children you, if you can't you can't be like sedaisical and leave it alone you yeah. have to make sure that you've taken the steps to be aware as to what is being taught to your children go to the school speak to the head teacher speak 100%, to the teachers 100 yeah. so as long as that's going on i think it's fine because you are doing your best the yeah. best that you can but the most important thing is environment if you're if they're in the right environment the influence although like, come on inshallah we're in the right environment inshallah. we know all the things that happen around us yeah we don't go towards it or you know uh, agree with it or support it or yeah. promote it yeah. because we know it's not right because yeah. alhamdulillah we've been in the right environment um so yeah i mean one of the one of the things is like the, the roles that parents have as well um and also the fact that that they're different and i think that's one thing that's that's really important in a successful family and i'm sure we spoke about this briefly but i'd love to get your take on it so so the viewers can hear as well is like making sure that the husband plays I want to say the typical but the correct masculine role and the woman plays her feminine role as well which doesn't mean that she can't work for example but it does mean that their roles complement each other to create the most cohesive unit to be able to raise a family right mm. no I, I think it's very right and it's very true that you, you mentioned this and I think it's important especially for people who are going to become new husbands yeah. New wives, you know, Listen, new I say it, the, the, the divorce rate in our community is about 40% right now, by the way. That's bad. Which is very bad. high. Bad. Very high. This is from surveys, by the way. This is not me just like making up a figure. Mm. From mm. surveys down in the community, it's about 40%. Oh, and, and, I, and I generally feel, by the way, a lot of these divorces, they, they sort of stem when you don't know what your role is at home. 
Yeah. I, I, I genuinely believe this. Like, if you don't know what your responsibility and, let's say, duty is as a father yeah. and a husband, and if you don't know your duty and responsibility as a mother and a wife, mm. you can't get along. And if you have children, it's ten times worse. Like, if we look at the problems that used to happen many, many years ago, there were either, like, for example, you never got along because either someone's rude or someone's abusive or, like, you know, very typical sort of thing. But now, the divorces are happening for what? My husband doesn't help me at home. Or my wife is hardly at home. Like, but you don't know why you're getting married. And I, I remember we had a podcast on this sort of, sort of thing. If I can dive there for a little. Yeah, go for it. Where I was like, from, from the environments I've been in, the surroundings I have, the friends and community members that I know, I've sort of understood what's happening. For young couples getting married where they don't know what the role is. The girl, in my opinion, May Allah bless all of them, bless all the sisters out there. They get married thinking of a fairy tale. Mm. Their marriage is what ring am I gonna have? Mm. What dress am I gonna wear? Mm. What hall am I gonna be in? Not always the case. No, not always the case, which is fine by the way. Yeah. It's a dream, maybe she's nothing haram with it. But the moment that wedding ends, she doesn't know what to do. Yeah. And that came from where? I believe the parents. Mm. The parents never told her this is how you need to be. Lazim Saadin, Lazim Yeah, I mean, Amin, listen, it's, 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 it's not just about the it, physical split said, of duties. It's, more also, to it. it's also about the, 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 the way that you manage someone's emotions, mm -hmm. relationships, mm -hmm. expectations, which is also, there's a big yeah. onus on the... On the fathers as well, yeah, I, I think, to be able to teach. And I'll sell to the guys, like, a lot of people, I think, don't understand masculinity correctly. Mm. They feel like, I'm the man, I wear the belt, you sit at home, and, I, and I'm right. out 24-7. Right. This is the worst thing you can ever do to That's your wife, yep. to Ascent. your children, Ascent. and to any marriage. Ascent. Because I'm telling you now, like, I, I, I've seen it happen where men think they're men because they control the house. Yeah. Or men think they're men because she doesn't serve the say. Yeah. Or men think they're men because you know I have the final say and whether it's my way or the highway. Mm. It's never been like that. Mm. If we look at uh, you know, like Islamic exa examples, if we go to the life of Umm al Mu'minin Sayyid Khadija, mm. wa mm. we never saw that happen. Yeah. If we go to the lives of Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib, salam, Fatima Zahra, salam Allah, alayha, we never saw that happen. We saw nothing but love. Rahmah, Muwadda, help yeah. in every aspect of I life. Mean, I mean, yeah, even a great example talked about helping, and, and you know, even there's there's multiple stories in the hadith about I mean, helping in the kitchen, for yes. example. Yes. Whereas, for example, as you said, some men will think that that is demasculating, and and I can't I can't picture a man that's more masculine than Imam Ali. I think it's impossible. I can't choose one. I, I, I knew one, one, one day. Um, I'm not going to mention who, where. Anyway, I was yeah. sitting somewhere. Yeah. I picked up. From the table, a few cups, plates, and I went and took it to the kitchen. Nice. A few days later, someone's like, Ali, why are you doing that? It's not your, not your job. I said, you know my job. Number one, I've never seen that as a job. Number, num Babysitting. number two, <laughs> number two, I was like, well, what did I do wrong? Number one, I think I helped someone. It's your home as well. Number two, it's, it's, I don't say, I'm going to mention the location. But <laughs> oh, whoever, whoever, I mean, oh, yeah. I don't know if it no, is, but like, as in, like, even if it's not your home, it's someone's no, home. It's, you're, yeah. you're doing something no, pleasant to no, help clean. Like, wow. The, 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 what are you talking about? No, that's not right. That's not masculinity. No. Uh, uh, and that's toxic. That's toxic. Yes, that indeed, toxic. indeed. Yeah, that toxic. toxic for the marriage as well, not not yeah, masculinity yeah, yeah. itself, but for everything. Agreed, agreed. But you know, I would say, Alhamdulillah, we have a lot of sisters out there who they're happy with what they do. Yeah. They're happy looking after the home. They're yeah. happy whether it's you know cooking the meal for the family. They're happy arranging everything at home. But I would say this: when your wife is sick, please help her. Yeah. When your wife, you know, is 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 let's say she's tired or like she's overwhelmed. Bro, there is nothing wrong with saying, you know what, you want help? Yeah. Shall I help you with something? Wallah would go a long way and it will help your marriage in ways you can't imagine. Yeah, absolutely. We don't see this. We just come home, it's like a button. Food's on the table. Yeah. The clothes are ironed. Yeah. The clothes are washed. Yeah. We don't know what they go through. Wallah, no, of course, it's so difficult. Let's just help them out a bit. Yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. Wrong. Absolutely. Nothing no, wrong. nothing wrong with it at all. And I think as well that, that you know, again, uh, 
talking about the community, a lot of problems there's been is that a husband expects that but then is not fulfilling his duties. Mm -hmm. So he expects, for example, a lady to contribute. So I think a lot of people want a, like a stereotypical 50 -50. Uh, wife, but then they're not like by, by the Islamic law, she has to do this and that. But then they're not, they're not fulfilling so, their side as well. We, we, we see that a lot. Which is, which I is, see a lot, and we, I've had so much conversation with the, about this yeah. subject with a lot of people. Yeah. But it doesn't just get to where their head because I think they're culturally mm. being raised like this. Yeah. Although they know Islam says this. Yes. But, yeah. You know that's not. There's, what, a, there's a there's a there's a stark difference between what Islam says and what your culture has taught accent, you. Accent, yeah, yeah, accent, yeah, accent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I I think what needs to happen. I'll be very honest. Yeah. I think communities need to you know like make workshops. Yep. Communities like need to hold seminars, conferences. Oh, You've heard it here first, by the way, brothers and sisters. Yeah. 2024, <laughs> say that Ali is going to do a workshop about marriage. Allah coming Allah. to you very soon. <laughs> uh, you never know, inshallah. Well, why not? It's an amazing thing to do. But because I feel like, like I said, you know, I didn't finish my point a bit early on when I was like, you know, the sisters they only see like the wedding and nothing else it's because no one knows what to expect in a marriage. Mm. All they can, all they have a vision is, okay, I'm going to be at home, I'm married, I'll make children, and I'm working. Mm. They don't see life. No. They just see a vision, which is very vivid, and things can change at any time. Yes, yeah, so life hits you quite hard, and it's quite shocking, and there's a lot of things to do. And by the time you know it, you're thinking, "What have I? Yeah. What have I done?" Unless you're prepared and you know what you're doing and mm. you've got a plan. And I think just last point from my side as well is communication is really important. So be able to sit with your wife That's or your key. spouse. Yeah. That's the key yeah. to everything. Yeah, yeah. I had um, I had a manager once in in the in the corporate world mm. who um, who told me that and I, I've, I've added this to my relationship as well and, and this is a nice bit of advice to any married couples is that every year at least but as a minimum if the, the, the eve New Year's Eve you sit down together and you make a plan as to what your goals that you want to work together are what are the things you need to work on what are the things that have worked that you want to continue mm. what problems may you have um, and you kind of start to map out a one-year plan, a three-year plan, and a five-year plan. Yes. It's very interesting because you'll see if you're on the same page and working towards the same goals, it becomes a lot easier when you have a partner to do so. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you, and you know, it's funny that you mentioned this, by the way, because just two or three weeks ago, I was sitting with someone and we mm. had a very similar conversation. Mm. And we were like, you know, wh like, what's your goals? Like, what is it you want to achieve? What is it you want to do? Like, alhamdulillah, we're married. And then we have children who are working. Yeah. What's next? That's, what's next? Yeah. You can't be static. Like you can't. Yeah. By the way, I'm, I'm not talking about just financial. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be community. It could be your religiosity. It could yeah. be your children. Yeah. And we were speaking, and and we and, and I came up with a few. Mm. Was, I've never thought of like five years time. Mm. But I was like, you know, what, maybe I want to be the best dad. Mm. Like I want to be the best husband. Mm. But I want to be the best servant I can be mm. to Islam, mm. and whatever it is, I will do, I will go there. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. whether it's talking, speaking, reciting, sweeping, cleaning, packing, mm. whatever small thing it is, Allah the more Allah. service that you can do, I think the more Allah Subhanahu wa Taala can bless you in both worlds. Because we Shalom. always say, "Rabbana atana fi dunya hasana, wa fi akhirati hasana," and, and and that's something is achievable. Yeah. And we see it happening. Yeah. You can't pick one thing and then leave faith. No, these things go hand in hand yeah. together. Yeah. And that was like my personal ones. Like we had our own family ones, but I'll leave that for the family. Yeah, of course, no, that's separate. <laughs> yeah. It's a lovely point to end on. So yeah, thank yeah. you so much. Um, uh, it's been a massive, massive honor to have you. We're just reaching our destination now. And inshallah, uh, we'll park up. So yeah, then we've arrived at destination. Seatbelts are coming off. Yes. You're getting comfortable, getting ready for the quick fire round. I'm getting nervous. Don't get nervous. Yeah, no, it's not that. stressful, it's not stressful. So, the first question. If you could have an unlimited supply of one thing, but it can't be money, what would it be? An unlimited supply of one thing and it can't be money? Yes, what would it be? Latum. Oh, yes! Brilliant. Who is your inspiration and why? Sayyid Muhammad Rada Shirazi. Mm. From a very young age, why? I would listen to his lectures after he passed away. Rahmatullah Allah Allah it was a few months after my father passed away, and I fell in love with Allah his akhlaq, his iman, you know, how he carries himself, how he delivers his lectures, and his knowledge. I wasn't expecting that one. Yes, the yes, question yes. is okay, don't be nervous. Allah you Allah see, it's nice so far, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. Why? 
because I know I've got a busy day ahead. Jeez. What's your go-to beverage when you've just woken up? I know you're... I, I knew this when I wrote it. A Costa Latte. Yo, I, well, I was going to I was thinking, how can I put Costa Latte into this? Because I remember. Uh, this one, I, I, I put this before our interview. Okay. But subhanAllah. Mullah Basim or Sayyid Hassan? And I put this before, subhanAllah. I had the feeling. Do I have to choose you one? You have to choose one. The biggest impact has been Basim al-Karbala. Okay. Yeah. If you were auditioning on the Shia voice, if what would be your go-to recital? Oh, if I was auditioning on the Shia voice, yeah. <laughs> my go-to recital, I think Nai. Nai. Arabic Nai. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. About who? Because it's the Shia voice. Let's say there's people hearing. I've hardly done Nai. I think that's one thing probably I would like to do. Nice. Yeah. About who? Do you know? Abu Fadl Abbas. Wow. Okay. So I'm not like Abu Fadl. Sayyid Murtaba. Al Husseini. Or Sayyid Mushtaba. Oof. Al Husseini. You have to choose one, and they're probably going to watch this. Just so you know. You have to choose one. Sayyid Murtaba Al Husseini. Yeah. Yes. 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 Much. That wasn't me. Yeah. Say it. <laughs> now. Just so you know. <laughs> If you could learn any language in a week, what would it be? Farsi. Yeah? Yes. You don't speak Farsi? Uh, very little, but I don't understand it. Why Farsi? Because I love the the nohas, the lectures. Oh, no. Somebody know, asked me this question, like exactly the same answer. Mm. A fresh haircut or a fresh pair of trainers? Haircut. Hello. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? Ooh. This, this can't be a fire question. It has to be, just one <laughs> sentence. What advice? Just continue doing what you're doing. <laughs> I don't know. Really? Yeah, you yeah, want to yeah, change anything? Yeah, yeah, no, no, okay. no. Okay, and the last question. What is happiness to you? What is happiness to me? Mm. Okay. Happiness is the happiness of other people around me. I think that I, I would Very say nice. that. Like seeing my children happy, my family happy, that's what happiness is to me. God bless you. Habibi. Inshallah, always everyone around you is happy, Sayyidna. Inshallah. And thank you so Inshallah, much. Habibi. We really, really, it was a lovely conversation. I enjoyed this God very bless much. you. Thank you so it, much it, for your time. It, it made me think about stuff I've never really thought about in a very really? long time. So thanks. Alhamdulillah. For the I, hope I hope it was useful for the brothers and sisters Inshallah. as well. Inshallah. Uh, and apologies if we've offended anyone, I don't think we have. But I'm just saying that because that's the default thing I say at the end of a sentence. I don't know why I said that. But Sayyid, thank you so much. God Habibi. bless you. Inshallah, Pleasure. we'll see you soon. Inshallah. What they say Hello, yeah. My dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much once again for joining us. Um, that was a phenomenal conversation. I hope there's benefit uh, for those of you that are going through any tough times, uh, dealing with trauma, um, dealing with problems in a marriage. Feel free to contact the Imam Hussein TV group. I'm sure that they can provide you and put you in the right direction for the correct support. Uh, but on a lighter note, um, it's been lovely to have you again. I hope you've really enjoyed today's show. Find out who is going to be joining us next week, inshallah, when there's another episode of Behind the Wheel. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.